you are still tuned in to your power station energy 100 with myself Elsa Bitibinyani this is Econo Chet let's talk business with Mr. Daniel Steinman and we are talking about the national budget uh, we have touched on who are the drivers of course uh, in the economy and when we look at it like you and me we are just the the chickens, like Mr. Daniel Steinman <laughs> called us. So uh, there's a lot. If you want to listen to this talk, you can, of course, go to uh, economist.com.na and you will find us talking there about important matters in regards to the economy. But let's quickly touch on savings reducing deficit, Mr. Daniel Steinman. Okay, Elsa B, I think you can... You can what what does this have to do with the budget? You can pat yourself on the back again because mm. we said last week the deficit will be below 4%. Yeah, we did. And the deficit is actually projected at 3.2%. Mm. You know, so, um, yes, what does this mean? It means that the government is set on a policy and it is not an overnight policy or it's not only the three years of the medium term expenditure framework it is sort of a change of direction Mm. remember where our conversation started what what directional changes do we have where where are we going in a different direction and this is most clearly demonstrated in the fact that uh, the big euro bond of 750 million US dollars that is due in October next year Mm. part of this bigger revenue income of the previous fiscal year Mm. is not just blown goes through the expenditure channel there's a this windfall of the bigger revenue and Actually, it's more than a windfall because it, now it is sort of an established trend. Mm. It's not the once off. But part of it is put aside. So we are saving, the government is saving a part of the bigger income to make provision for two thirds of the euro bond of next year. The other third will be financed. Um, through various refinancing mechanisms Mm. and there are several and it's too technical to discuss all of them but what I can point out is that we have been very very successful since about 2018 in refinancing government debt either extending the maturities or spreading it over more instruments and this is what they will do and you can see again that confidence in the minister's uh, vote Um, we know that the big uh, creditors they will accept that because it's not it's not like Argentina or Mexico or Turkey after we are in trouble we we go to the the bondholders and we say hey uh, we need to talk Mm. you know it's not we we this is now more than a year in advance eh? yeah it's only October next year Mm. 2025 that we are signaling how the euro bond will be redeemed. Now you can also see this reflected in the debt figures because now the the going wisdom was we're going to eat 75%, three quarters of GDP uh, within the next year or two is the way that government debt was rising. Mm. Now you see we've, we've bridged the crest. We actually down at the end of come February 2025 next year, government debt is projected at about 61 percent mm. you know, of of GDP, and um, coming down from the the 64 or 65 where it was. Yeah. Now this is what I'm what I'm pointing out. What is important in terms of savings is that. You first of all need to take care of these big monsters like the euro bonds Mm. Uh, and you need to do it in an orderly, structured, disciplined way Mm. because the last thing you want to do is scare the market and the market scares very quickly. Mm rapidly foreign investors they're very fickle Mm. if everything is hunky dory they love you they pour money into your (laughs) bonds if there's the slightest width of trouble Mm. they just 
evaporate. Yeah, I mean, they do. Argentina is the is the nicest current example of a country in serious trouble. Mm. Why? Because they did not uh, commit themselves to restructuring their capital market in a disciplined way, in a transparent way, ahead of the time, mm. telling everybody. We're going to have a problem there, but this is how we're going to handle it. This one we can handle. We're not going to have a mm. problem. You know, again, confidence. Yeah. First part of the confidence is fr- on the minister's side. Mm. Can he rely on his figures? Yes. Second part of the confidence is in the market. Can we rely on what the minister says? Yes. Can you see that that link there? Yeah. yeah. If the minister is confident, the market is confident. Mm. If the market is confident. They keep supporting the government in its growth curve. Mm. The minister can continue to be confident. Mm. So, a very, very important lesson out of this budget it is. is that that bi-directional confidence mm. between the government as custodian of the economy and the foreign investors or the capital market investors as supporters of what Namibia needs to develop. Mm. You know, so uh, and this is w- important because we need much more money than 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 the hundred billion. <laughs> <laughs> that is just the small part that we control. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> as a as a parting thought, I think it's important for our listeners to take with them this this basic idea that the government. And I don't want to reduce it to whether it's good or bad or whether it's ethical or not. That, that's all nonsense. Mm. I'm looking at pragmatic considerations. And the question we ask is, does the budget do what it intends to do? Mm. And the answer is a very loud yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I wouldn't want to add anything to that. Let's leave it on that positive note. Uh, Mr. Daniel Shaman, thank you so much for coming through once again and uh, talking about this important uh, matter, I would say. And, uh, you know, to the listeners out there, it's important that you do know what is going on in our national budget and what will be happening in the next two years uh, in the country economically. So please go to uh, the website of the um, the Bank of Namibia in order for you to see um, what the national budget will be or how they will be giving out money, I should say, to the ministries and to the agencies that is, of course, uh, helping to run our country economically. On that note, let's quickly say goodbye, Mr. Daniel Steinman. Bye. (laughs) Until we meet again, thank you so much for keeping it locked to the Power Station Energy 100 FM.